Hello, I know it's been absolutely ages, but um, I just really enjoyed my summer and I kind of made the decision that if I have time to uh, make videos and edit videos and upload videos, then I have time to finish off the book I've been writing. So that's what I've been doing. I've been editing a book I already wrote and then trying to finish off another book that I was in the process of writing. And that was kind of my deal with myself. I wasn't allowed to make any more videos. I haven't quite finished that book, so I am breaking that promise to myself a little bit, but I just had so many things I just wanted to update on, and I've been recording footage the whole time, so I'm going to be uploading some content at some point, hopefully. Um, just diaries of things, probably not loads of voiceover or loads of talking to camera, just videos, just for myself, so that I can keep track of all the things I've achieved. The reason I got up in the middle of that video was that I suddenly thought I hadn't checked if I'd frame this right so yeah that's why the top of my head is going to be cut off. I'm not going to re-record it and being strong I'm not going to be an over perfectionist like I always am with these films um, otherwise it will never go up. So yeah uh, can I just also briefly interrupt myself to say I got that free off the side of the road the other day fits perfectly in the space I was so excited it nearly didn't fit I had to take off some bits and like really force it in but oh my god isn't that a thrill free perfect yeah I saw it and I thought you're coming home with me more space for my duck. Um, yeah, so the main thing, that the most exciting news is that I actually have an allotment now. <laughs> Something insane happened. Basically, um, me being me, I thought, well, maybe like in two years time, my youngest daughter will be at secondary school. And so I can, will have more time uh, in between writing. <laughs> Just on my way, this is the way my brain works. Uh, and not having to take my daughter on the school run. Um, and I happened to walk past the allotments um, at a park near where I walked the dog and I hadn't quite realised it was so near and it was there, like just like really near. Um, the ones I've been looking at are quite f a lot further away. So suddenly there was this really near allotment, it's like a 10 minute dog walk um, and it's the route that pretty much I take anyway, it's just down a slightly different road. So I put my name down on the list thinking it would take two years, so I'm just going to have to slightly, <sighs> it's really hot. 23 degrees but I'm wearing a thermal vest because my house is always cold so <laughs> I'm going to have to get a change. Um, yeah so I put my name down and they said the waiting list was about six to eight months and I was like no <laughs> I was thinking two years. Uh, so I thought no they went six to eight months they won't offer me one in six to eight months. They offered me one to in, in six to eight months I think it was six months <laughs> and then you're at the point where you're like well how can you turn it down? Because other people are like, you know, all the other allotments, they're all waiting two years. My friend waited years for her allotment. So I, we did what we always do, which is like, we'll just go and look at it, which is how we end up buying houses. We own a wood. I think I did some video of that. So hopefully I'll upload a video of the wood. We just, you know, we'll just go and have a look. <laughs> so we just went and had a look and um, sort of Al was the one slightly against it because you know, because of time, and we've got so much to do at the house, and I've got quite a big garden. Uh, it, it is a lot. I don't really have the time, but then, you know, who has time for anything? No one. So I just thought, I'm going to take it. Um, we got there, and it was phenomenal. It was right by the, an entrance gate, um, which is the nearest one to the one I would, you know, the way I walk. So it's literally a 10 minute walk at the top of the gate, very near the top. Uh, it's got the most astonishing views of the countryside over Hastings looking over St Leonard's and Hastings. It's not in that bad a shape. It's not in bad condition. I mean, it looks pretty, you know, you look at it and you think, oh God, there's a lot of weeds, but actually the man who had it before was an elderly gentleman. He'd been looking after it. He'd obviously looked after it really well for a very long time and then it had got too much and he um, sadly died. Um, and so we inherited a plot that, you know, had a lot of love gone into it. There's still, there was loads of potatoes to dig up. Um, it'd all been dug. So I'm actually just digging, I had to dig all the potatoes out and, um, we got we we got this you know we got there and there was a plum tree and uh, an apple tree both in fruit looking amazing very overgrown and needing pruning but still fruiting really well owls just immediately sold because he loves victoria plums more than anything and um you know it reminds him of his, of his grandma and his childhood so he was suddenly on board and saw the view as well the amazing view over the country the east sussex countryside um and we just thought, well, you know, if it goes wrong, then it was just a failed experiment for a year. It's not the end of the world. That it's not very expensive at all. Um, after the deposit, the like rents twenty five pounds for the year, and then obviously there's the deposit and the key deposit and all the other bits. But yeah, it's really your your mem first year's membership is more expensive. But after that, 
Anyway, it was a half plot. Literally, we got there and I was like, we don't need the full plot, it's too big. The other half um, was going to be kept by the lady who's um, the widow of the um, gentleman who had it before. And um, we bumped into her this weekend and she said she wasn't going to keep it, it was going to be too much for her. So I'd actually already <laughs> emailed and said if the other half does come, become available I would be interested. Not because I thought I could manage it but because I just am over ambitious and I thought well you know at some point I might like to have the whole thing and also it's on a big hill and I just thought well if people are using pesticides or I don't really understand the rules because it seems like a very relaxed allotment they're not there's not super there's not tons of rules you can kind of do whatever you like you can use it just for flowers if you want you know it's very chilled they're really nice there's not doesn't seem like there's awful like internal politics they're very like kind um so I just thought well I'll mention that I'd quite like the other half I just thought it'd be better than having a neighbor who comes in and starts using loads of like you know I don't know fertilizers and things that maybe are going to run off um because we're on a huge hill going down towards quite a lot of calibiate springs and um water courses I just think you know there's a gill there's an, a really ancient gill uh, which has got a, um, a proper cloud forest, you know, a temperate rainforest in it. I just think we should be very cautious about putting things on the ground that are going to potentially drain down into those watercourses. So, yeah, I, um, I put my name down because I just thought. And actually, the other half has a shed. It's a very fallen down shed, but it is a shed, and it means that Al doesn't have to build me yet another shed. Bear in mind that he's built me this shed, which built me the greenhouse another shed down there and we have a shed at the wood so I feel like we've got a lot of sheds and I don't think he needs to be building anymore anytime soon he's got long Covid <laughs> it's hard for him to do the stuff he's doing and much as I'm like yeah I can do DIY I can't get my son a lot isn't it it's tiring um, so it's got a shed it's got a compost heap it's got you know lots of fruit trees and bushes in it and I figure that at the very least we can take it on for a year and use that as a base and we can always build a new shed on the other plot and give up the other half if we decide it's just too much for us. Um, plus it means we can, you know, put in way more perennials, stick in, just take up more space, basically. We'll see, it might just be an awful failure, but I'm gonna hopefully, over the top of this ramble, put some footage of it all, because it is amazing, it's really nice. So yeah. That's my update. Crops wise, I mean the best thing has definitely been the sunflowers. <laughs> Every year I just make the most amazing sunflowers and this year I did it in the hugel culture bed which was really good I think. I mean I've seen a lot of people saying it's habitat for snails and slugs but the whole garden is habitat for snails and slugs. It is insane this garden. I think it's just really had no ecosystem at all. So we've got our pond in. We have, we've definitely had a newt in the garden before and we did once hear a frog and we were so excited because we'd put frog spawn we'd actually raised them ourselves in the house and put them out, out and i was so thrilled when i heard that frog and the next day al found it with its head chewed off by some cat or fox uh we don't have any slow worms although they're all over the allotment i'm so excited i've seen so many slow worms and um it's just been a nightmare with the slugs and so what i've had to start doing is i have to start seeing them off and I really hate it. It makes me really, really unhappy. I was just chucking them all in the hot bin or in the compost. But I figure they're just gonna be laying their eggs in there and it feels like the ecosystem is out of balance. It's too many. Um I've got no toads. I'm gonna to try and see if I can <laughs> acquire a toad next year. Um we just got nothing. We don't have any beetles that are eating them, eating the eggs. I've seen some millipedes, no centipedes isn't it? I've seen, I think centipedes eat the eggs. I think that's right. They definitely predate for certain things. Um, I've had some amazing leopard slugs, which I will put. I'm going to put a video up just of the leopard slugs because they are brilliant. But they don't kill them. They don't eat them, which is what a lot of people claim. They just are very territorial and will attack other slugs. So that's what I understand. I think from extra googling. So I was under the impression that they would kill and eat them but they don't they just like to and they will eat your crops as well so it's not like they're a blessing <laughs> but they are also you know they I've seen quite a few slugs with injuries and I think they've been attacking them and I've certainly got some brilliant footage of one attacking some slugs which was very thrilling I made my whole family gather around to watch it 
I'll drop it. It's like the slowest motion action movie you've ever seen in your life. It was thrilling. They were all they all watched it. Um, so yeah. Um, I still think next year. I think next year will be better. I think I've started gardening in two of the worst gardening years for many beginners. I've seen a lot of people saying, you know, I feel sorry for anyone who's just started these last two years because they will have found it deeply kind of confusing. We've had some amazing crops though. Certain things have been brilliant. Potatoes have been great. Literally just did all those in buckets. They've been brilliant. And they were just mostly all, um, I, had, I bought some charlottes, but the rest of them were just Riverford potatoes that I chucked in. They were all did brilliantly. Um, my Borlotti beans, um, I'll show you those in a minute. They've been brilliant. Um, my, uh, yeah, lots of things have been good, but mostly things have just been eaten immediately by slugs and snails. And I have had to start really bringing things on um, to get quite big. And then I've had to put, you know, plastic bottles over everything. I've not managed to ever grow a single kohlrabi. Uh, I've, well, apart from those tiny little ones I got last year, I've not managed to get a radish. Everyone gets radishes. They're supposed to fruit in 30 days. Mine don't, they all get eaten. Uh, what else? Pak choy gone immediately even the red stuff doesn't seem to um so yeah i have started going out and, and murdering them so anyway i've been rambling on now for absolutely 20 is this 20 minutes <laughs> i'm gonna upload all that chat 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 it's lunchtime i'm really hungry this is why i can't do the videos because it takes me so long to then sit and watch myself whittering on again um I've st i'm still going though look i'm still thinking about things to talk about anyway it's all looking so much better though than it was this time, you know, two years ago. I have to just be really grateful for how wonderful it is and how much fun it is to be out, out in it. Um, I'll just leave it there, I think, because otherwise this will never. 20 minutes of me just blah, blah, de blah, ding. And then I've got to go and find all the footage of everything I've talked about. <laughs> anyway. Oh, and I can't find my camera, so if you can't hear me, it's because my I don't have my proper camera on my mic. Let's hope this wasn't a waste of my life. <laughs> anyway, I will see you again. Oh, teeth, yeah, got my teeth off. They're very toothy, I'm still not used to them. I was quite a toothy person before, but when they were wonky, they were less. <laughs> now it's a bit, yeah, I'm not, I keep biting myself as well. <laughs> what have I done? Anyway, they look nice. Anyway, I'll just free associate forever. I'm gonna go. See ya. <laughs>